Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today on Kerbal Space Program, we are going seeking for the anomalies. So I'm taking the big track out to the Vehicle Assembly Building, because that's where we find the first one. The memorial to the Mark I pod, which was used in older versions of Kerbal Space Program. And instead, uh, it is gone now, replaced by the one-man and the three-man pod. Now, taking the big track north across the runway, we find a little black dot on the horizon. So, heading towards that, it starts to form itself into a more legible or visible shape. And right up close, yeah, it is a monolith with the squad logo on it. And I can't help but notice it's floating about a meter off the surface. Now, if we want to go and find the... Um, anomalies in the rest of the, the universe, there's a lot of space to cover, and we can do it from orbit using the ISA MAPSAT pack. Now, not only... This is originally designed for mapping the surfaces of planets, getting the topography so you can figure out high spots and low spots, but it will also tell you the locations of any anomalies that it flies over. So, in our go, strapping a couple of radar additions to the side of this, and we're going to launch, and we're going to look for them on Kerbin. Now, um... To use the Ascent Autopilot, we're going to set the inclination to 90 degrees. That means it will be a polar orbit instead of the usual east to or east to west orbit around the equator. If you do an east to west orbit, you will only cover the equator and you won't see the rest of the planet. So by putting it into a polar orbit, you ensure that you're going to be able to cover the entire surface of the planet over time. That means that once we get up about 10, 14 kilometers, we start to curve northwards, heading towards the polar ice caps where we'll ultimately insert ourselves into orbit and prepare to start scanning the surface using this amazing piece of technology we have. So if you click on the ISA map set in the bottom left corner, it looks like a set of dividers that you would use on a map. You can see that there's a bit of the topology is already being mapped out here. Now, you can see we're in this uh, this line going upwards. You can see the location being marked. And where we are, the, the map is being traced out. And, and it just shows the altitude above above or below z sea level. Now, at 100 kilometers up, you were tracing out a narrow little swath of the, the landscape. But if we uh, raise our orbit up higher, we will move more slowly, but we will actually cover a wider area. Um, the other trade-off is that higher up you go the more spread out your data points are and the lower your precision is. But, and for um, if you're really wanting to build high-resolution uh, topology maps, then you know, go for it. You know, Get low down and get as much detail as possible. This little map here is actually a lot lower resolution than the, the map that is actually generated. In fact, using the ISA maps app, you can stream data to external applications and do all sorts of other fancy things. Um, now, I'm raising my altitude here, and you see that as I time accelerated, I've ended up... Um, I've ended up time accelerating, and as it goes above uh, 50 times time accelerated, it has stopped logging the map. But now we're up at 450 kilometers. I, you know, set my orbit to circularize, and you know, of course, use physical time acceleration because this is a nuclear rocket which takes forever to accelerate. I think it has two meters per second per second of acceleration, which is a uh, fabulous compared to ion drives, but um. For uh, anyone that wants to do anything on a human time scale, it can be rather tedious. Nonetheless, after a relatively short amount of game time, we are in orbit. And you can see the area being cut out, um, scanned, is a lot wider. If you compare, obviously we're near the pole and it kind of spreads out because of the projection. But if you compare the previous polar passes, we we're getting much more wide area being covered here as opposed to a very thin strip so now yeah i set time acceleration to 50 which is the fastest the plugin will support i'm sure it would go better but uh they do have to keep some gameplay here and as we pass north and south across the planet we start to trace out parts of the map now in kerbal space program the parameters of the orbit are not going to change 
So if it wasn't for the planet's rotation, you would scan the same area of the planet again and again. We're entirely reliant on the fact that the planet rotates underneath us so that we can scan the whole of the planet. However, one thing to be careful of is to make sure that the orbit that you are in does not have a period which is a close fraction of the period of rotation of the planet, because if that's the case, that means you'll end up going over the same parts of the landscape again and again, like I did here. So to avoid that, what I did was drop my orbit back down to a lower altitude and change the period a bit more. And again, once uh, I let that run a little longer, I ended up with a complete scan of the surface and locations for all my anomalies. Now, there are a few anomalies which are hundreds of kilometers away, so I built this little uh, jet to fly out a pilot all the way over so I can get a better look. Now, this doesn't fit the full map sat on board. What it fits is the, the ISA, ISA GPS unit, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny part. And what it does is it allows you to access and view the map, but not generate new map data. Um, it's basically you know one tenth of the size and it'll stick on anywhere. So I built one of my mini jets using a fuel tank and canards and a couple of parachutes for landing. And after a bit of flying around, I got to the area, but it was actually kind of hard to see where it was. And I had to fly around to get low enough before I found it in this valley here. And um, yeah, so I used the parachutes to set it down nicely. Um, and uh, still used a bit of jet engines to adjust my actual landing spot. But ultimately, I get there and Dudfree Kerman gets out and has a good close look at another monolith. But of course, Kerbin is but one planet in the Kerbal system. There's almost a dozen other terrestrial planets to look at, including uh, Val. I went all the way out to Jule and decided to scan its four moons. And I didn't find anything on Leith, but I did find an anomaly near the south pole of Val. So what I could do is mouse over the, the icon or the, the dot and it gives me the coordinates. I can plug those into the landing autopilot and it puts me pretty close, but ultimately I had to end up adjusting it to get really close to get a close look at this thing. And you can see it's kind of like a stone circle, which is interesting because it's an ice moon. Where has all this stone come from? It has a bunch of pyramids pointing southwards, I guess. It's not really clear what this is, but it's definitely a sign of alien intelligence because I sure as hell didn't put that there. Now going out to the next moon, Tylo, we find two different anomalies relatively near to the equator. Now the first of these, um, it's hard to tell from this angle, but as we come down, um, you can see that it looks like a big mound, basically. Um, if you land in the correct place, you can actually walk inside it. It is a giant cave on the surface, which I, I don't capture in this because I managed to crash into the side of it. It's kind of hard to land on Tylo because the gravity is basically the same as Kerbin, but there's no atmosphere to slow you down. It's kind of annoying, particularly because the only engine I brought with me was uh, uh, this nuclear engine, which doesn't uh, exactly set the world on fire in terms of thrust. Anyway, the other anomaly is a little more mysterious. You have to get pretty close up to see it. And then it becomes clear that there's something in the texture that pops up. And from the right angle, it is a face. And uh, it took me a while to uh, figure out who it was, I, or at least to follow the popular consensus that the, this is actually Carl Sagan immortalized on the surface of Tylo. Finally, in the Julian system, we go out to the tiny asteroidal moon of Bop, and uh, we put ourselves in orbit around this. We actually scan a huge amount from, you know, way up here. It, the, the really limiting factor is how long it takes for, the, for Bop to rotate. But yeah, there's a single anomaly there, and it's perhaps the most mysterious and amazing of all. As we come down low, we see something which resembles a... a green mass with tentacles with eyeballs. Popular p opinions suggest that this is in fact the remains of the mythical Kraken. While many people spread rumors that it was still alive in Point 0.17, most people seem to agree that the assault with deadly floating point numbers has finally destroyed the Kraken. The renormalization of the coordinate system has left it unable to move on the surface of this planet. And so with that, 
I think we'll leave it here. There are many more things to explore, but I'm going to leave them up to you for now. I will be covering the surface of uh, Duna in the near future. There are some amazing things there which deserve a video of the, on their own. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.